it feels as though, you know, you've got to stand up and pay attention. Um, the Bible says that there's, you know, you've got 10,000 instructors, but you, there's not many fathers. And you, I, as he speaks, you can feel the heart of a father coming out, wanting to nurture the church. He was there in the beginning of the movement of COC, and he's been there all along uh, teaching. Uh, he's experienced a lot through the movement. He's seen a lot through the movement. And his heart is still to see people's lives being changed and transformed, children being raised up, that this movement would have an impact on this nation. And, and so it is with an honour and a privilege to introduce Pastor Kevin, if you can come. Thank you very much. How about we give him a big hand? Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, man. I've got more. I've got more. Lord, amen, not just somebody that comes and helps us out when we get into a bad place, but let him be a Lord to help us all the time, eh? Yeah, well, I'm Pastor Kev, as you've heard, and uh, I come from South Australia, and don't hold that against me, it's a good place, there's people there that need Jesus, the same as everywhere else, but my heart is to be able to encourage uh, the church, encourage people that are on the journey, amen, who knows that Christianity is a journey? It is a journey. And you got started when you got born again and God tries to take us on a journey. And uh, sometimes we get off the bus or off the train and we just have a holiday. But God wants us to stay on this train, on this journey, on this bus, so that he can fulfill his call on your life. It doesn't matter whether you're young, old or indifferent. Eh? I heard the other day that I'm 25 plus GST. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> must mean something. But I don't feel any older than 25 uh, because Jesus is my Lord. Amen. And it's been a wonderful experience to walk with Jesus uh, all these years. I've been in ministry for over 40 years. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to develop you. Ministry is a wonderful thing to develop, <laughs> to develop you. And uh, so I've enjoyed my life and I enjoy it more now than ever. Yeah, more now than ever. Yeah. You know, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah, it reminds me of a little story. I got lots of stories, but a little story I heard one time about this uh, little girl. She come out in the kitchen in the morning and mum was there getting something ready, breakfast ready, and the little girl pulled on mama's dress and says, mum, are you happy? And mum says, yeah, I'm happy. And she goes away and she comes back a little while longer and she pulls on her dress again and says, are you happy, Mum? Are you sure you're happy? Yeah, I'm really sure. She went away again and come back the third time. Mum, are you really, really sure you're happy? And Mum says, yes, of course I'm happy, darling. She said, and the little girl turns up and says, well, Mum, let your face know. <laughs> We're in church. Jesus is Lord. His presence is here. Whether you can feel it or not, His presence is here. Something to have a smile on your dial. Yeah. Come on, let's be happy. You will live longer. You will enjoy more. Let's be happy, amen? Come on, this is a marvellous journey that God's got us on. He's waiting to welcome you in the pearly gates, amen? He's welcome to shake you. He's looking forward to shaking your hand and say, good on you. Come on in, my friend. Yeah. Come on in, my friend. Somebody said, come on in. What is it for the premier's labor? But whatever it was. Welcome, our good and faithful servant. I, I think he'll say, come on in, you wonderful friend. Yeah. Because we're friends with Jesus. Amen. Yeah. What a good story. This is some of my family tree here. 
they come today, some from Toowoomba and Brisbane, uh, to uh, have a listen to uh, and see what I've got to say. I've been told, I've been told already I better do a good thing. <laughs> you know, just about every day of our life, we pray for our family tree. My wife and I, just about every day of our life, we pray for the family tree and believe for God's grace to come out over the family tree. Don't forget the family tree. I said, don't forget the family tree. Yeah, so often we can forget them because we think they're a bit tough. And if you want to hear about tough ones, come tonight and uh, we'll give you some ideas about some tough ones, okay? Yeah, thank you. Mark and Grace are having a break and uh, good on you, Mark. Good on you, Grace. Hey, wonderful pastors. And they've done a wonderful job uh, serving the Lord and making room for Jesus in this region. Amen? Yeah. Other people have done it, but so are they. They've been good friends for quite a number of years. And uh, it's been a privilege to be able to be here in his pulpit to bring the word of the Lord. Because I believe in bringing the word of the Lord. You know that? Yeah. We've got to be able to hear the word of the Lord. There's something about hearing what God's saying. Amen? Sometimes we can't hear what God's saying. Sometimes our ears are so full of other stuff. That's why we've got to get quiet before God. And I guess God had a good idea when he said, give him one day out of seven. What do you think of that? Eh? He said, give me one day. You can have six and just give me one day so that I've got some time to get into your brain. Because we live so busy, eh? That's God's biggest enemy, is busy. That's your biggest enemy, is busy. If you've got an enemy, it's busy, it'll be your enemy. Because we keep too occupied. It's a busy world we live in. But we've got to make time for the Jesus, eh? Make room for the Jesus. Hey, remember he come to, get, uh, come to get birth. Mary and Joseph brought him in to get birth, but there's no room in the inn. There was no room for him to be birthed. Hey, well, we may have had room to birth Jesus, but now he wants to grow up and lead you into all the paths of righteousness and holiness. But so often if we're so busy, there's no room. Hey? So we dribble along through life, uh, hoping something good will happen, when really what we've got to get time is, we've got to give time to listen to him so he can talk to us and lead us. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, hearing a bit of a joke one time. Uh, uh, you don't mind having a joke in church, do you? No. Yeah, well, this uh, young lad, he come uh, to Dad on Saturday morning. He says, Dad, he says, can I, can I, can I, can I borrow the car? <laughs> and Dad says, um, borrow the car. Uh, well, first of all, he says, you'll have to mow the lawn, tidy up your room, and cut your hair. The boy thought about it for a while. <laughs> and he says, Dad, Jesus had long hair. Moses had long hair. Elijah had long hair. So what do you think about that, Dad? And Dad says, yeah, and they walked everywhere too. That's good to see you smiling. <laughs> yeah, it's good, eh? Sometimes we feel like we crack our face if we don't, ever, if we don't smile enough. Here's a young man that's travelling with me. <laughs> Isaac. He's a pastor's son. The pastor took over my church down South Australia. And uh, he was going to go to university this year. Uh, but uh, he decided that God spoke to him and said, take a year off. I want to do something with you. So he, he's traveling with me and Hallelujah. learning from the old fella. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Isaac. I've got to keep going too, haven't I? I'm known as a long, tall, skinny pre uh, preacher. Can God use you? Anybody think, are you too old to be used? You're too young to be used? Have a listen to this. The next time you feel that God can't use you, just remember Noah had a drinking problem. 
Adam was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was, was abused. Moses had a stuttering problem. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David had an affair and was a murderer. Elijah was suicidal. These all people that God used greatly, okay? Just by the way. Uh, um, where are we? Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. Jonah ran away from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. John the Baptist ate bugs. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep while praying. Martha worried about everything. <laughs> the Samaritan woman was divorced more than once. Zacchaeus was too small. Peter was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer and Lazarus was dead. <laughs> so what do you complain about? God used them. Hello? God used them. God used them. You can't be too bad, too stupid <laughs> that God can't use you. All you've got to do is make yourself available to God. Amen? God is not intimidated by uh, <laughs> circumstances of life. Eh? No, 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 no. If you, think you're, if you think you are small and insignificant, you just spend your night with a mosquito. Okay, now we get serious. Hello? Jesus is Lord. It's a good thing to be able to open up your heart and open up your mind, eh? Let's do that in a word of prayer before we start listening to the word of God, eh? Because we've got to learn to listen with our spirit, not just our ears. The Bible says, have an ear to hear what the spirit says. You can hear what a man's voice says, but listen to what the spirit of God's saying so that God can take us another step on our journey in life. Because there's more in Christianity than coming to church. That was quiet, wasn't it? I said, there's more in Christianity than just coming to church. There are souls to be won. There are people that are lost. And God's found you, and he's looking forward to, you, to helping you and use you to be able to help others. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your grace. Grace, grace. God, your grace. Grace that is greater than sin. Grace, grace, God, your grace. Grace that's able to cleanse us all within. Father, we just thank you for your amazing grace. And God, I release your amazing grace across this auditorium this morning. And we just thank you, God, that by your grace, we will hear a valuable something that will help us on our walk with you. Father, we just commit this time to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. praise the Lord and start preaching. You know, what we want to do is to hear what the preacher's got to say, yeah? Yeah. Don't forget, listen to what God's got to say. Because I've found God's got a great ability to be able to speak while the preacher's speaking too. Yeah. Take more notice of the, 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 the Jesus, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's good to be alive, isn't it? Eh? It is good to be alive. Where's that singing lady? Where is she? Is she here? Is she gone? No, not here. Arise from your deception. Isaiah chapter 60. Arise from your deception. Tonight, tonight when we, or this morning rather, don't forgive me, will you? Uh, this morning the first song says, Arise, eh? Or awake. Awake, you sleeper. Well, I'd like to suggest that hey, we've got to waken up to what God wants to do in this day and this hour. Be awake, because this is a strategic hour across the globe. I mean, across the nations of the world. I don't know whether you know it or not. If you don't listen to the news, you wouldn't know it. But don't hide yourself from what's going on. Hey, get to know what's going on so you can pray and believe God for the best to come out of the worst. Yeah. Hey, we're in a mess because man has got no ability to, to be able to run this world. Right. This world is coming to a close and Jesus Christ is going to return be, be, before too long. But before he does, he wants the church to awaken. He says, arise and shine. Arise and shine. Just don't arise, but shine. 
This is what God's after from His church, from His Christians around the world. Amen? It's Christ's ones to arise and shine. Because sometimes the journey's been a bit long and we can lose our shine. <laughs> you ever had a torch that's lost its shine? Yeah, well, sometimes we can be like that. Still got our eyes open, still talking, eh? but the spirit's gone down a little bit because of the length of time that's taken for Jesus to come back. My daddy said, Jesus, come back, but I'll guarantee it's a lot closer now than what he told me the first time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And whenever he's coming back, it doesn't matter when he's coming back. He'll come back when he's ready. And uh, before he comes back, he's looking for you and I, believers. Amen. Christians, Christ's ones, to be able to reach as many people as you possibly can and sow seeds of righteousness. That's what God's looking for. And he says here, see, old Isaiah, he was a great prophet. I tell you what, if you ever want to hear a man of God, listen to old Isaiah. Six, I think it was 740 years, I think it was. I think it was 740 years before Jesus turned up as a baby, he prophesied he was going to come. That's a good prophecy. That's a long time to wait. Yes. You're getting old by the time you get that old. <laughs> and this guy that could prophesy that, this is what he prophesied hey, to the church of today. How about that? Yeah? He said, arise and shine from the depression and prostration in which your circumstances have kept you. Arise to a new life. Shine and be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Isn't that good? The glory of the Lord. What is the glory of the Lord? The manifestation of the spirit of righteousness will be seen on you. There will be a change on you when you receive this light. Amen? Yeah. And he wants us to understand, uh, the, to stir ourselves up like Paul said to Timothy. Come on, Timothy, stir yourself up. There's more in you than what's coming out of you. I wonder how many of us God could say that to, eh? Hey, come on, there's more in you than what's coming out of you. And we've got to listen to what God's saying this day and not say, well, uh, that, that's not for me, Pastor Kev. It's for every believer, amen? That's what Jesus said. I believe Jesus anyway. Hey? We can't be intimidated by this world. God said he's given us power and authority over this world to intimidate this world, amen? Come on, church. Come on, Christians. God is in you intimidating the unrighteous spirit world so people can come to Christ. And he says, hey, your light has come. Jesus is the light of the world. Eh? He's come. The light has come. Uh, he says, come on, rise up and shine for the glory of the Lord's upon you. Eh? He's risen upon you. Amen. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Does that sound like a bit like now? A little bit. Dense darkness shall fall upon the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you. Come on. And his glory shall be seen on you. Amen? The glory of the Lord shall rise upon you. That's why we've got to awaken. This is our greatest hour, church. Believers, this is our greatest hour. I've had some pastors that I've talked to, and they say, how do you believe like that? How do you talk like that? I said, because I'm a believer. And i got somebody inside here called Noah, the Holy Spirit. He knows everything. I call him my Noah. Hey? My Noah, he gets you aware that something great is going on. Amen? And God is trying to say to his church, rise up, his believers, rise up, because there's more. Eh? There's more for us than it's against us. There's greater power, amen, that's with you. And which is against you. It just feels bad, that's all. I'm aware of that. I have plenty of that too, but don't worry about it. Hey, Jesus in you is greater. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's give Jesus a clap, eh? Woo! Hallelujah. I reckon we can do better than that, actually. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> get into it. Come on, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, glory to Jesus, glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We give you praise, oh God, we give you praise, yeah. oh Jesus, 
I want to tell you, Christianity is a spiritual life. It's not a matter of just hitting, sitting back, listening to everything and learning everything. But we've got to learn what it is to be able to listen to the Spirit and feed off the Spirit because it's the Spirit of God that brings life. Amen? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. God's got greatness for us. Your day hasn't finished. It doesn't matter how old you are. Come on. Come on. I know lots of us are doing great things, but I'll guarantee you can do greater. God's led me into some great things, but they can be greater. Come on. God's looking forward for you going up to find cripples and taking them out their chairs. Putting legs on them where there is no legs. Motorbike accidents. Putting their leg back on them. Arms. You with me? Kidneys. Liver. New heart transplant. The deads. Don't go to any more funerals. You take them home. Come on. Jesus never went to, to, never took a funeral service. He took a resurrection life. And he says, if you want to believe what he says, Jesus said that same spirit that's in him is in you. There is only one Holy Spirit. That's good news. Yeah. You say, well, where is it? It's waiting to be awakened. It's a waiting, waiting for my mind to open up to the truth of what God says, not what I think about me from my past or some other rubbish. I mean, sometimes we've got to clean out our brains from, yeah. with the, uh, from all the rubbish that we've collected over the years yeah. and let Jesus get in there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God says we've got the mind of Christ. I want to tell you, you've got to get, the mind, get rid of the mind of all the other rubbish a bit first before as much of him can come in, eh? Yeah, have a good clean up with a Holy Ghost broom, eh? Let him sweep out the rubbish and let's believe. Yes, he sweeps it out by you believing what he says. Yeah. Eh? We are, um, we're amongst the greatest, greatest time in history eh? where God's going to show himself strong. God's going to show himself mighty. God's going to show himself in a way that he's never shown himself yet in history. Yeah. And you know he's going to use ordinary people. Just like you. Give somebody a hit and say, he's talking about you. Yeah, he's talking about you. God wants to use somebody just like you. I said, God wants to use somebody just like you. That's the God that I serve. That's the God that I talk about. He's the God that empowers just ordinary people. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, you're worthy to be praised. You paid the price so we could be free. Jesus, the mighty power of heaven comes to earth by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. So amazing. So amazing. So amazing. So that's the introduction. That's the start. Now we're going to go over to Isaiah 55. Anybody ever heard a sermon on Isaiah 55? Now, I bet you have, but maybe you haven't heard one like this one. <laughs> Isaiah 55, he starts off, here's a man that could hear from God, hey, 700 years before he turned up, so that's a good, that's a good test. Yeah, he's worth listening to. He, he had good ears to hear what God was saying, eh? And this is something else that he said. He said, don't wait and listen for everyone. He said, wait and listen for everyone who's thirsty. Come to the waters, he who has no money. Come and buy and eat and come and, and buy priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price, simply for the self-surrender that accepts the blessing. You can get all this stuff, God's, God's goodies, for the simple sacrifice of self-surrender. Hey, Isn't that good? God's got stacks of stuff, but we've got to surrender ourselves. See, I honestly, I honestly believe, and it was my experience, uh, and I've seen it in a few people uh, in the last 40 years, that there's one thing to be born again. There's one thing to be born again and accept Jesus. And that's wonderful, amen? Yeah. That's the very start of our birth. But then the next step is to give my life to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I, I might say I give my life to Christ, but I don't do giving my life to Christ. Yeah. But I've got to give my life to Christ. That means to say, when he asks me to do something, I say yes. I don't say I can't do it. 
I go about setting about doing what God's asked me to do. That's because he owns me now. If I've given my life to him, he really owns me now. And the moment you let him own you, then he can do something amazing with you. Here's a bloke that done that. My family knows. Hey, I was a, I was a wild, crazy bloke. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't bother. It's all finished. <laughs> oh, Jesus is good, isn't he, eh? He's lovely, eh? Oh, how I love Jesus, eh? How I love Jesus. Yeah, yeah, go on, sing it. Come on, sing. Yes. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Isn't that good? He first loved me. This time it's, oh, how I love sinners. Oh, how I love sinners. Oh, how I love sinners because Jesus asked me to, didn't he? Yes, he did. He never asked you to love the sin, but he asked you to love the sinner. Yeah. Oh, how I love sinners. Come on. Oh, how I love sinners. Oh, how I love sinners. Because Jesus asked me to. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to have life to Christ. Good on you. That's the idea. Give your life to Christ and watch what he can do with you. Hallelujah. He took me off the farm and took me around the world a few times. <laughs> Old bush kid. Yeah. Hey? And people thought I'd serve the devil for the rest of my life. But God. But God. But God. But God. Don't give up on your family wherever you are. Hey, don't give up on your family. Let God, put your faith in God, not faith in what they're doing. Come on, put your faith in God, not faith in what they're doing. Come on, God loves people, amen. He's madly in love with you. Can you accept his love? I said, can you accept his love? Because it'll heal you. And it'll make you whole. It'll take you where you would never believe into great things, amen. He said, so don't. Just simply surrender to God. Give your life to Christ. Why do you spend your money on things that are not good for you? Eh? Hearken and listen to me diligently and eat what's good. Eh? Come and delight yourself in the spiritual prof profuseness of the spiritual joy that God has for you. Incline your ear to me. Eh? Eh? How, how about that? Submit and consent to the divine will and come to me, God says. Come to me and your soul shall be, will revive, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Come on, come with me and watch what I can do, amen? amen. Then we go down to verse 5. Behold, uh, you shall call nations that you know not of. Remember, we're in a spiritual world, amen? Yes. You are a spirit person. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Let's declare, I am a spirit person. I am a spirit person. I've been born a spirit person. That makes me a spirit person. Every day of my life, I'm a spirit person. That's the truth. We've got to be consciously aware more than ever that I am a spirit person and God's spirit's come and connected me back up with heaven. Eh? Eh, I'm connected to heaven by the, my birthright. Your birthright's connected you to heaven that gives you access to the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Ma um, Matthew says that uh, your name's written in the Lamb's book of life and you're in God's kingdom. I said, that sounds good? Yeah. Your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Yeah. Nobody can rub it out. I said, nobody can rub it out. God put it there. God put it there. You can't rub it out. 
He said, you're in my kingdom. That's unconditional love, eh? That's, that's grace in abundance. That's God coming to an ordinary person like you and me and saying, I can use you. Will you let me? Will you let me? I can use you. Will you let me? He says, he said, you'll call a nation, eh? nations that you know not, nations that don't know you. you, you shall, they shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the, and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. His glory is on you, amen? The manifestation of God's glorious power is on you. And he says, you've got power to be able to call a nation. There's a nation of unsaved people around your region. I said there's a nation of unsaved people, yeah. stacks of people around the countryside. You with me? Unsaved. Yeah. God says you can call a nation. I'm talking about spirit stuff, yeah. okay? Not head stuff. How will you understand that? You probably won't, but you don't need to understand it. You need to believe it. It's a principle of God because God has created a spirit people. You with me? Connected up to him, and he said, this is some of the thing, the power that I've given you to be able to help people come to Christ. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, to help people come to Jesus. Isn't that good? Yeah. Are you interested in helping some people come to Jesus? Yeah. Well, here's one of the greatest keys uh, that I've ever seen. That God says, I've given you power to be able to call people to come to Christ. And they'll come because God's glorified you. Hey? You ever made a call for somebody on the phone? Out of town? Overseas? Didn't take long, did it? Well, God's spirit's quicker than that. And there's no charge. This is a spirit phone. This is a spiritual life. God is spirit. He come into your life by his spirit, yeah? Come on. He did. You got born again by the spirit of God. And you decide to get water baptized. If you're not water baptized, you need to be. I never said you had to be. You need to be. And you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking with tongues. Hey, that's what God's given us, to give us a complete whole life so that he can work with us. Amen? Because God wants to work with us. Hey, we are co-workers with God. And God's mission is get the lost. Get the lost. But if we're not careful, we can lose our vision. Hey, for the lost, because there's so much stuff that we've got to have today, amen? We get caught up with all of our stuff because we live in a society of stuff. So we work like mad to get our stuff, then you've got to work like mad to keep your stuff. <laughs> we've got to make room for Jesus. Don't forget the Great Commission, eh? Go into all the world, preach this gospel, this gospel of love. The gospel of love. Yeah, the gospel of love. There's somebody that loves you. And that's what God says you can summons them. And I want to ask that. You know what I was going to ask you. You had a summons to go to court, but we won't do that. But if you had anybody that gets a summons to go to the court, what happens to you? You, you go. You go. Hey, you, you end up there. Yes, sir. I've had a summons. The king of kings says... That because you're his son, his daughter, he's given you the privilege of being able to work with his spirit and summons and put a call out in the spirit for people. Hallelujah. Helping them to come to Christ. That's a spiritual uh, revelation that comes from this great man, Isaiah. He said, you can summons them, call them to come to Christ. Call them to come to Christ. Many people in some of the churches I've been in, because I've used this principle, many people have come in and they said, every time I've gone past your church, he said, I've always had this thought, I've got to go there one day. I've got to go there one day. One of these days I'll get there. One of these days we'll go. And when I arrived, they said, I felt like I was home. Yeah. Because you build something in the spirit, you with me? By the words of your mouth, you build a way for people to come. It's called the supernatural power of God. You work with the supernatural power of God. Does God want people to be saved? Yes. Does the church want people to be saved? Yes. Do Christians want people to be saved? Yes. 
and you can partake in it. This is not hard work. You haven't got to go overseas to do it. You can do it for yourself, amen, in your own home day by day. You with me? God has given us a declaration. My wife and I, I, I give us, uh, God gave us a declaration, and I believe it's from, from God to be able to be used in this day, in this hour, preparing people to come to Christ before Jesus gets back. I believe there's going to be a global revival yes. eh, where millions upon millions of people are going to come to Christ because God's, God's awakening his church to the power of the Holy Spirit, working through you. Hello. Working through the believer. The power of the Holy Spirit working through the believer. Come on. Get our minds cleaned out if you're born again. Choose to be a believer. Hey, doubters go without. Amen. Pray, doubt, and you go without. But pray, believe, and you can receive. And that's what God's looking for today from all of us. Amen. Christ's ones. Believe in the supernatural of God. God says, uh, people say, well, I don't know what to say. No <laughs> I don't know what to say. You know what God's answer is? Open your mouth and I'll give you something to say. <laughs> Gee, that's hard, isn't it? Isn't that hard? Yeah, that's really hard. Just open your mouth and I'll, I'll put it in there. You know, and those same people will be able to tell you that they were talking to somebody one day and all of a sudden they heard themselves say something and they said, oh, gee, that was good. Fancy that. Where'd that come from? I'll tell you what happens. It comes from the spirit of Jesus. And our mind gets a shock because our mind never thought it. It comes from the spirit. And our mind says, gee, fancy that, eh? I didn't, I didn't come up with that one. See? So we do hear from the spirit of God. Yeah? God does work with us. But what we've got to do is realize that he wants to work with us much more. Amen? I've got to be spiritually, more spiritually aware than naturally aware. We're very aware natural. But God wants us to be more aware of his spirit because that's where the power comes from. That's where the victory comes from. That's where God comes from to be able to help us in our poor human state. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. So he says, seek and inquire of him. Eh? And inquire of the Lord while he may be found. Amen. This is the day of salvation, isn't it? Sure is. Hello. Yeah. This is the day of salvation. The day's coming when Jesus has come back and it's cut off. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. There's two. There's two unpardonable sins. You know the two unpardonable sins. One is blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. Somebody that knows what the Holy Spirit and the working of the Holy Spirit and then blasphemes about it. And the other one is taking one day too long to accept Jesus. Yes. That's the two that I know of. Yes. Taking one day too long day. to be able to accept Jesus. And that's why God wants us to help him have his revival. We are co-workers with God. Can somebody say amen? amen. We are co-workers with God. That means to say you and I and God work together. Amen. amen. What for? For a harvest. Yes. If you get out around the countryside here, there's people buzzing everywhere in harvest times. You with me? They've got machines going north, south, east, and west. It's harvest time. Everybody's busy. Well, God said, it's harvest time for the church. Yes. Don't get your eyes on the net, what the devil's doing. Get your eyes on what God wants to do. And God wants to use his people to be able to call them to come to Christ. Yes. Come out of the darkness. Come and serve the Lord. And he says, get on to him while it's, while it's day. Do it now before the day of salvation closes. Amen. And then he makes a ridiculous statement. Hey, this is good, challenging stuff. I love it. Hey? Verse 7 says, let the wicked. Hey, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. For he'll have pity and love and mercy on him for our, for, and to our God. For he, is, he will multi, multiply to him his abundant pardon. Isn't that amazing? I said, isn't that amazing? Yeah. God says, don't waste time just getting caught up in this world with all the goodies and all the stuff. Make sure that you'll be able to remember the lost, eh? Come and drink of the spirit of righteousness. Eh? Call nations in. Call the unsaved people to Christ. Amen? Yeah? 
He says, you would, the wicked, let the wicked forsake their ways. Let the wicked. You mean I can be a part of helping the wicked forsake his way? Yes. You bet you can. Absolutely. I wouldn't be, I'd be surprised if there's a stack of you here haven't helped some people come to Christ already. Yep. Yeah, led them to Christ somewhere for sure. But this is a supernatural spirit way that you don't even know who they are or where they are. But God does. And we put it out in the realm of the spirit. You ever had God come and talk to you? Yeah. Yeah. He comes and talks to us. Why can't he talk to an unsaved person? He talked to me plenty when I was unsaved. When I was as wild as the devil, he talked to me plenty of times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some people say to me, oh, well, I can't hear in the spirit. Have you heard what the devil says? You're no good. Who do you think you are? How are you going to measure up? Yeah? You ever heard anything like that? That's a spirit talking, but that comes from Satan. Yeah. He feeds that into us to make us come on down to just mortal people without God. But God says, hey, come on. I live inside you. You're, you're, em, you're empowered. You're empowered. Will you use my power? Will you use my power? God don't mind you using him, his power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's, that's God, eh? He said, you let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, eh? that's why we love the sinner, amen? We love the sinner. Oh, sometimes, I, 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 some churches, I, you know, I sing that, and some of the older people just about turn a somersault in their seat. Yep. Are you going to tell me I've got to love sinners? Yep. yep. Not sin, the sinner. Jesus loved you when you're a sinner. Absolutely. How about that? Yeah. Why wouldn't he love other sinners? Yeah. We've got to get our thinking adjusted all the time, mate. Eh? To think like God thinks, that's unity. Yeah. When you learn how to think like God thinks, you come into unity. And according to, uh, where is Ephesians 3? <laughs> unity, is the pa- uh, uni- uh, unity is the place of power, amen? Yeah. yeah. That's where the manifestations come when we get into unity with God, in agreement with God. And uh, he says here, let the wicked forsake his ways. I'll read it again. I want you to hear it. He said, you can do this. Hey, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I'm willing to have a go. And then he puts in verse 8. This is, a, this is the part that rocks you in verse 8. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. <laughs> For other than, in other words, you say, you poor human beings, you wouldn't understand this kind of talk. No. This is spirit talk, eh? Yeah, oh, come on, you poor humans. You don't understand this sort of stuff. You've got to have the mind of Christ and see what, who God's made you, amen? amen. Yeah. yeah. He's made you a co-worker with him in the spirit. See, we can work like mad in the natural and do everything in the natural, wonderful in the natural, but how much did we do in the spirit to make it possible eh, for God to move around about our lives and the unsaved people's lives around the region, amen? That's what Christianity is about, making room out there for God to visit people. Yeah, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. For the heavens are higher than the earth, and so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, amen? He said, oh, the rain and the snow comes down from heaven, Hey, and returns not there again, but to water, it, but to water the earth and make it bring forth fruit and sp- uh, forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God says He puts in a little natural illustration. He says the rain, the natural rain comes down to do good. Yeah, yeah we all know that. The spiritual rain comes down to do good. Eh? Yeah. yeah, that's what He wants us to be people that can bring down the spirit world and hey, the spirit rain. That's, that's our work, eh? Yeah. That's our work of ministry. Every believer's got to work for ministry, amen? We've got a work of ministry. That is to love the lost. That is to pray for them. That is to believe for them. And to stand against the enemy, because we've got an enemy of our soul. And the declaration that we've got that's going to come on in a few seconds is... Uh, the declaration is a declaration that Bev and I put together, my wife and I put together over a few months, and uh, we declare it every day, sometimes a number of times a day. And you're not too old and not too young to declare, amen? amen. 
I said, you're not too old and not too young to declare. And it can make a difference in the spirit world. You wouldn't think that this could be. He says, yeah, my ways are different to yours. You couldn't think about this idea. wouldn't dawn on your human brain that you could do this but God says hey, I'm God I've got a spirit way yes. yeah I've got a spirit way and God says I'm going to lead you by my spirit isn't that what he said yeah. he never said I'm going to lead you by your mind he said I'm going to lead you by my spirit okay can we have that declaration please hey eh? oh it's only small Oh, no, it's bigger up here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Here's a declaration. The first part of this declaration is setting up who you are in Christ. Eh? Yeah. You've got to get your position right. You've got to position yourself in faith. You've got to position yourself in Christ. And this is what we do in the first part up here. Okay, where we go? What are we going to call it? The scenic rim, eh? That's where we are here, the scenic rim. Use it for your family, use it for your region, wherever you are, if you come from somewhere else. Hey, the Freedom Breakthrough Declaration. Ungodly spirits over the scenic rim. Listen. Amen. How much authority have we got? All. Yeah, all authority. He said, I can speak with a mighty decree, and the word I speak is fulfilled. Amen. Amen. That's faith. That's believing. Have anybody here ever been healed of something? Somebody's prayed for you and got you healed? Three hands. Uh, there's a bit more than three. Yeah, yeah. Somebody spoke some words, and the spirit world worked. Yeah. Right? Somebody spoke some words. I had a crippled back. I'm supposed to be in a wheelchair by the time I'm 40. I'm beating it. Yep. Because somebody spoke some words and God done a miracle. Amen. Words do miracles wrapped with faith in Christ. Amen? Yeah. Position yourself in the place that God's put you. God's put you in this position to do this stuff. Amen? Come on. Get your head into order with God and watch what God, how God can change your life. Amen? And others. Hey, we don't have to go to Africa. You don't have to go to Indonesia. Hey? Hey, you don't have to. But you can be a soul winner in your own lounge room, on your own bed, declaring hey, the word of the Lord. Amen. That's who we are. I make a mighty decree. Amen. Okay, the next bit. In the name of Jesus. How many strongholds? All. All of your strongholds, Satan. All of your strongholds. We're not fighting the devil. We're enforcing the victory of Jesus from the cross. Amen. Come on. You're, God never told you to fight the devil. He fought him and won. Amen. Amen. Jesus rose again, victorious and triumphant. We're not fighting the devil. We're saying there's victory in who I am in Christ. You with me? There's victory. Where are we? Hey. In the name of Jesus, hey, we trample over everything. That's in 2 Corinthians 10. Hey? The scripture there. Imagine God gives you power to smash thoughts that the devil has traveling around in the spirit world. I said, imagine God's given you power to do that. And sometimes we can sit back 
in misery land. Some of them, well, I can't do very much because their eyes are going to be open to who God has made you. Amen? Where God's positioned you. Come on. You haven't got to work with God a hundred years before anything happens. Born again and you're ready. Amen? Amen. Born again and you're away. Okay, where are we? I am an ambassador. Is that it? Or demonic? No, demonic spirits. eh? Of antichrist. Bondage. Slavery. And unfaithfulness. Over this scenic rim. Obey the word of the Lord today. In the name of Jesus. Jesus and I decree your kingdom topples and falls suddenly. But the, king, oh yeah, but the kingdom of God is extended over the scenic rim and God is today revealing himself to the people. They know the truth and the power in God's truth is setting them free today. And they know the truth. I'll guarantee that nobody had to tell you you were a sinner. We didn't have somebody to come and tell us we were sinners. We knew we were sinners, yeah? Yeah, good. That's all right, eh? Because that's what that says there, eh? They'll know the truth because Jesus is around, eh? Amen. Yeah, and he lets you know. It's inside of us, every man knows it. We're born with that in us, eh? We're born with it in us. There's a knowing within us, the Bible says. Everybody knows. Isn't that good? Yeah. How about that? Uh, are you going all right? Yeah? So you can do this. I say you can do this and help people come to Christ right across the regions, wherever you come from. Across your family, whatever. It's spirit stuff. Faith, spirit stuff. Faith, spirit stuff, okay? Where are we? An ambassador. As an ambassador of Jesus Christ, I have been given the keys of heaven's kingdom. Hey, did you hear that? Are you an ambassador of Christ? Then God says, I've give, he's given you the keys of heaven. How's your brains going? How's your brains going? Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes our brain look at that and say, who does a bit of a spin and says, I don't know so much. <laughs> but I believe. I believe what God says because I'm a spirit person connecting to God. Amen. As an ambassador of Jesus Christ, I have been given the keys of heaven's kingdom realm to forbid on earth that which is forbidden in heaven and to release on earth that which is released in heaven. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That's what God says. God says, I've given you power to forbid. What heaven doesn't agree with that's going on on earth, he said, I give you power to forbid. Why do you think the world's gone mad? Because the church has been asleep. And the spirit world's gone crazy. Come on. But the church has got power over the spirit world to bring it into subjection. Right? To stop the rubbish. And so people can come to Christ rather than be entangled with devils. Yeah, that's, that's our job. It'll be wonderful get to heaven there's people all around all around you and they're saying thank you and you say what is it thank you for and, but God's let them know that they're there because of your prayers hey? Wow. Hey, what a wonderful blessing that'd be hey? you say oh I didn't know all about this this is faith talk hey? this is believing what God's made you in the spirit world that I can do with Jesus amen okay where are we in Jesus name that's a good one Okay, well, the spirit power, we start up there. In the spirit power of unconditional love, I like to put this in there. The spirit power of grace, because it is spirit power. Grace is the spirit, the spirit of Jesus. The spirit power of mercy, that's forgiveness. Jesus given us mercy, forgiveness, amen. The spirit power of truth, the spirit power of revival, and the spirit power of, re- uh, of breakthrough. Eh? Breakthrough for a revival, amen. A breakthrough for a Holy Ghost move of God right across this nation of Australia and across the regions here in Queensland. Yeah? Let's be believers. Don't look at the storm, look at the Jesus. Yeah. Okay, where we go again? Uh, 
least to manifest its kingdom of God, position, and authority. And because of this authority given to me through my blood covenant with Jesus Christ, whatever Jesus and I decree in his name is established, and Jesus and I decree to the people of the scenic rim that today you are free from the spirits of bondage and enslavement. Today you are free to respond to the drawing power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, people. Today you are free to believe in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Come on, men and women. You are free to say yes to Jesus. Today you are free to accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. And in Jesus' name, Jesus and I summon you to... Hey, look at that. Yay. Jesus and I... Uh, Jesus and I summon you. Eh? Jesus and I summon you to come and receive your kingdom of God freedom today. Amen? Amen. Grace, grace, grace. This church will have copies somewhere. Uh, they'll get them anyway. If you want a copy of it, if you want to be a part of it, get a copy of it so that you can be a part of what, what God's saying, amen, what God's trying to do with his church today because I'm interested in what God's trying to do. Are you with me? i just got one verse left, two verses left. This is a place that you'd never believe. Hey, you'd never believe this was written in the Bible, but here it is. The lovers of God. Anybody here a lover of God? Okay, count me in, Jesus. Count me in, Jesus. I'm in. Yeah. Who chase after righteousness will find their dreams come true. An abundant life drenched with favor and a fountain that overflows with satisfaction. A warrior filled with wisdom ascends into the high places and releases regional breakthrough, bringing down the stronghold of the mighty. Watch your words and be careful. Don't be negative and... Uh, 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 negative Nelly. Hey, be, be positive Polly. Hey, be careful what you say and you'll be surprised how few troubles you'll have. On the bottom there, or it was on the bottom there were all the scriptures where that come out of. That, yeah. that declaration come out of it's all scriptures. Oh, it's all scriptures. Yeah, come. It's written on the bottom there. Sorry. So that we might know that we're not just on a merry-go-round of ourselves, but Jesus is saying this stuff. It's time for the church to arise, waken. Hey, to the magnificent glory that God's put on you. Hey, can I feel it? No, I just believe it. Then I'll feel it. Hey, if I run by my feelings all the time, I'm a carnal Christian. Uh, that means to say you're born again, uh, but you haven't changed your mind yet over to the life of the Spirit. Haven't changed your mind over to the leading of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Father, we want to say thank you. Hey, can we say thank you? Thank you, I can take place in this. Thank you, I can be used by you, my God, to declare and to speak forth your words across this region and whatever region and over our families. God, I thank you for it. Eh? I thank you. Come on, I want you to pray. Not just for me to pray, I want you to pray. Thank you, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, church. Come on, church, that's it. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. Hey, come on, thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful, Jesus. We thank you that you've included me to be able to be a part of what you're doing in this great time. Jesus, I say yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes. I'll say yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, yes, yes. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, yes, yes. That's what God's looking for. That's what God's looking for in our lives. Eh? He's looking for the yes. How many of us said no? Not ready yet. Got to do Bible college. Eh? Jesus is the best Bible college teacher you got. Yeah. Jesus is a good teacher, you know that? Yeah. I, I'm not against Bible college, but I'm against thinking Bible college is going to be a total answer. Yeah. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. I'd like to pray for somebody that's here. 
and when you were younger, you got beaten with a chain. Where are you? Somebody got hit with a chain somewhere. Where are you? You got whopped with a chain. God wants to come and help you today. Where are you? Quickly. Somebody's here. Where are you? Quickly. God spoke to me about this morning. Come on, quick. Don't be ashamed. Be bold. Where are you? Somebody give you a beating up. I want to cry too. Because I think, how good's God? To tell me this morning when I was praying that there's going to be somebody here. Getting beaten with a chain is not very much fun. So many things in this soul got messed up because of that act. But Jesus is going to come because he loves, okay? I said, Jesus is going to come and manifest his mighty power in this life. It should never be the same again. You say, how do I know? I know because Jesus loved people. <laughs> Jesus, it's by your grace and your grace alone. We come and we stand here with this little woman. We thank you, God, for the anointing power of your spirit, for those words and the pain that went with all this stuff will be just loosed out of her mind. Father, we just thank you for the stronghold that's been built there. It will go. Get out. That's it. Get out and leave her alone and never come back and torment her, you tormenting spirits. She's alive in Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you tormenting spirits, you go. Because Jesus comes and cleanses her by the power of the blood. Father, we just thank you. We release your peace, the peace of God, over this wonderful woman. Father, we just thank you for your wonderful peace to go with her. For the rest of her life, she'll know peace by the Jesus love that lives and abides within her. Father, thank you. Isn't that good? <laughs> That's good. That's so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're just so beautiful, Jesus. You know all about this little woman, but today is the day. <laughs> today is the day. so used to telling God if he doesn't turn up within two hours you're going to miss me <laughs> so if you want to do anything for me God you better do it quickly because I'm gone rather than say God you can have as long as you like when we first started COC we had no end did we we had no end we had a start but no end <laughs> now you talk about that today hey, people look at you like a cow looking at a new gate Uh, how could you not have an end because we've had enough no we haven't because we've learned to come and to try and get our intellect fixed but we come to get our spirit alive to God we could worship here till 5 o'clock this afternoon and it wouldn't matter a bit if we float in the spirit just the wonderfulest time we ever had just, just communicating with God we've got to learn that God should come first eh? yeah. so that he can do what he wants to do in your life in my life in the church church as wherever he got believers amen he got lots of churches with lots of believers eh? yeah. Jesus I wonder if we could arise in honor and just say thank you as you sing this song together, right?
Sing it to him. That's the idea. You sing it to the King of Kings. Come on. Sing it to the King. Yeah. He's worthy of our voice. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I exalt you, Lord. accepted Jesus as your Savior. You haven't got connected up to him. You know a bit about him, but you haven't really said yes to him and given your life to him. And I'll give you an opportunity while we sing this chorus, just the chorus part. Again, come on out of your seats and come out here if you want to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Be quick. We're not going to go all night. You know whether you need to or not. And you're welcome to come and say yes to Jesus. Come, come, come. Jesus called his disciples and said, come follow me. He never said, uh, stay down the back of the shed so nobody can see you. Uh, he called them out in the open. Because this is an open invitation to give my life to Christ. Uh, we're not ashamed of Jesus Christ in this place. We're not ashamed of owning Jesus as our Savior. Uh, but I want to invite you. Come on out while we sing this chorus the last time. That you might be able to be connected up to the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. That's the chorus. I exalt. 